1058, the morning of August 9th, the bomb was exploded above the city and in the towering mushroom, Japan could read its doom. Nuclear weapons, perhaps the most devastating creation of the modern world, possessed by only a handful of nations, but feared by all. Nearly 80 years after the first atomic bombs fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the threat has not disappeared. It has evolved. Nuclear weapons, a threat to many, possessed by few. The bomb that destroyed Hiroshima in 1945 had a yield of 15 kilotons. In today's arsenal, that's considered low yield, yet it erased an entire city in seconds. The weapon that destroyed Hiroshima back in 1945 had a yield of about 15 kiloton. So by today's standard, that weapon would be considered a low yield warhead, <laughs> even though it destroyed an entire city. Um, but today, most, most weapons typically have yields in several hundred of kilotons. By the end of World War II, the destructive power of the atomic bomb changed global warfare. What once required thousands of bombers could now be done with a single warhead. Because you have to remember that at the time, US conventional bombers had been carpet bombing and firebombing Japanese cities for months and months. You know, hundreds of thousands of civilians had been killed. So in that, in terms of city destruction per se, it wasn't a significant change. It was more like, here is one weapon that can do what it took many, many bombers to do before. Um, and then of course, as the nuclear arms race took off and other nuclear weapons, uh, other countries decided to develop nuclear weapons, we got into this insane buildup and, and, and nuclear arms race and competitions with the Soviets. Who has the bomb? Only nine nations possess nuclear weapons today. But two countries, Russia and the United States, hold the overwhelming majority, nearly 90% of the world's arsenal. The countries, there are nine countries that have these nuclear weapons. And, but overwhelmingly, and we're talking about almost 90%, are in the arsenals of uh, Russia and the United States. These two countries are the ones that have by far the most nuclear weapons. And that has always been the case. So part of it is because of their experience with the Cold War, uh, the role in the arsenals they, they developed at the time, the strategies, et cetera, et cetera. Russia has over 4,300 nuclear warheads. The US follows with around 3,700. These numbers include active and reserve warheads, plus thousands more awaiting dismantlement. You'd have to drop quite significantly before you get to the next level, and that is China, which we think is... Well, so let me just back up and say, so the, the nuclear arsenals of Russia and the United States, they include, for, for Russia's... Uh, in Russia's case, just over 4,000, we think something in the order of 4,300 uh, nuclear weapons. Um, the United States a little lower, about 3,700 nuclear weapons in their arsenal. And uh, both of these countries also have significant numbers of retired weapons uh, awaiting dismantlement. Next on the list, China, Britain and France. Then India and Pakistan, regional rivals with roughly equal stockpiles. Israel remains ambiguous, and North Korea? It may have around 50 warheads and growing. From that, you go down to countries like uh, Britain and France that both have around, uh, you know, 200 plus, 250 to 300 nuclear weapons. And so then you get to India, Pakistan. They have around 170 or so nuclear warheads uh, each. And from that, you go down to um, uh, Israel, that we think maybe have some just under 100, perhaps 90 nuclear warheads, um, and then the last, uh, the lowest on the on the list is North Korea. We think they have something in the order of about perhaps 50 nuclear warheads. Modern nuclear weapons are smaller, more compact, and vastly more powerful. Their delivery systems can cross the globe in minutes. The arms race is no longer just about quantity, but capability. 
nuclear arsenals continue to evolve. Um, they always do when countries modernize. They always uh, improve them in some shape or form. Um, sometimes they introduce entirely new types. Um, and, and so it depends on the country. It's not the same uh, across the board. Um, if you look at the large nuclear weapon states, um, the sort of modern nuclear weapon states, if you will, uh, Russia, the United States, and to some extent Britain and France, they have developed nuclear weapons that are, you know, very advanced, uh, very compact, very uh, capable. Uh, delivery systems also that can reach, um, uh, you know, across the world. Um, they have, uh, especially the United States and Russia, they have a wide range of arsenal uh, of weapons that are designed for different purposes. The Iran question. Iran, still a signatory of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, insists its nuclear program is peaceful. But recent reports raise concerns about its potential weaponization path. They've detected signs that scientists and engineers in the Iranian system have um, started examining options for how they could speed up development of nuclear weapon if, if the Iranian uh, leadership decided that they should go for a nuclear uh, weapon. Uh, at the same time, of course, Trump is also the the character that pulled the United States out of the Iran agreement, the Iran agreement, um, back in 2018, um, and that was the agreement that put severe constraints on on Iran's ability to produce enough material for uh, for a nuclear weapons development. Um, so, of course, after Trump pulled the United States out of that treaty, um, the Iranian has have not surprisingly um, increased their inventory and, and how much of it is enriched to high levels. A new Cold War? With treaties collapsing, tensions rising and arsenals modernizing, the world may be entering a new Cold War. But this time, the stakes may be even higher. We are in the early phases of a new Cold War, yes. Um, there's no doubt about it. All the indicators are going in that direction. Uh, increased antagonism, uh, you know, norms, agreements falling away, uh, buildup of nuclear forces, modernization of nuclear forces, etc. Those are all the indicators um, that can evolve into a sort of full-scale nuclear war, no doubt about it. The power of nuclear weapons changed the course of history. Whether they define our future remains in the hands of a few and in the will of the world to pursue peace.